All right, welcome guys to another video, a new video. Today we are going to be going over inverse fair value gaps. This is another one that's been requested. Now we've done videos in the past on fair value gaps, but not a lot of people know maybe what an inverse fair value gap, how to use an inverse fair value gap. How do I specifically use inverse fair value gaps? So that's what we're going to be going talking over today. And the first thing I just want to want to start over is, you know, just the basics, right? So exactly, you know, what is a regular, you know, fair value gap first? So looking at, you know, candle structure, candle formation, we know, right, that a fair value gap is a three candle structure. So what does it look like? We have, you know, a candle here. And then we have, you know, another candle here. Right. And then we have another candle here. And you can see the body, right? This is our fair value gap or what a fair value gap would look like, right? We have three candle formation right to the downside. One, two, three. And we have a gap here created that is our fair value gap or what would be considered, you know, our fair value gap. So we take the previous wick, right, to the next wick, and this now becomes our fair value gap, right? It's the body of, you know, this candle formation. So now, what is an inverse fair value gap? Well, an inverse fair value gap is just a regular fair value gap that gets broken through and then comes back to, to add support or add resistance. So if we had, you know, a bearish fair value gap like this, what an inverse fair value gap would be is, you know, let's say a regular fair value gap would be, you know, we'd come up into this and then reject and come back lower. But let's say we actually disrespect this fair value gap, end up breaking through it, right? So now an inverse fair value gap is once we break through this fair value gap, we would want to see it now hold and act as support. So a lot of the times past fair value gaps will then switch by it or, you know, switch just like, you know, resistance turns support, support can turn resistance. It's the same thing with a fair value gap right? So once we break through this past fair value gap, this is now going to act as an inverse fair value gap and going to act as support when we come back into it and then possibly go look to see higher. So again, inverse fair value gap, just a regular fair value gap, but use once we break through it, right? The opposite direction, we now want to see that fair value gap hold and, you know, sh so sh you know, show some sort of strength, right? So looking at the charts now, let's see if we can find some examples and actually how do I use them to my bias, right? A lot of the times what I use inverse fair value gaps for is it actually gives me a good bias and understanding of where price wants to go next. For example, looking at today on ES, going down to the five minute, we can see that we had, you know, clear sell side here. We can see all these lows. We have one, two, three, four, five, you know, five low stacked here, right? This is a clear sell side level acting, right? Actually, wait, I think it was on NQ. Let me pull up NQ. NQ pretty similar here as well. NQ a little bit more uh, clear to understand, right? We have clear buy side level. We have two equal highs up here. Ends up getting swept. We have market structure shift. And then looking at the 15 minute, you can see, let me get past all these old drawings off so it doesn't mix up. You can see we had break of structure. And then we had this 15 minute fair value gap here that we ended up coming back into and then rejecting to go back lower. You can see we came up and then ended up selling off from FOMC. So how do I use an inverse fair value gap? What would possibly be an example of one? Well, let's look at the five minute here. Well, you can see, looking at this chart here, we have, you know, a big move to the upside. Now, once we sweep this level here, what am I now? I'm not bullish anymore. I'm bearish, right? Once we sweep this buy side level, again, looking at a bigger time frame, like the 15 minute, once we sweep this, you know, buy side level, what do I think is the draw on liquidity? The next draw on liquidity obviously becomes whatever that next low is. So this now becomes the draw on liquidity. I called this live when we were, you know, with the team. I said the draw on liquidity is going to be, you know, this low after seeing the structure we've been playing out. But how can I use an inverse, inverse for value gap to give me sort of an even more strong bias going towards, you know, something like this? So let's go down to the five minute. So if I am bearish now, right when this holds and I'm bearish, I want to see some sort of bullish fair value gap show disrespect. I don't want to see us respect a bullish fair value gap. So if we're looking at the five minute, we can see, right? We have, you know, this fair value gap here and we have, you know, this fair value gap here. So if I'm bearish, I don't want to see us continue to respect these levels. So looking at this fair value gap, I draw this in, you can see we come down and we end up holding it, right? We're still respecting it. Notice we end up breaking through it. Once we break through this, 
this now gives me an, a more confident short bias knowing we could possibly go lower, right? This tied in with our market structure shift, right? If we're looking at the five minute, we don't have any market structure shift, nothing yet until we sweep this low. Notice this was the first low that we actually was broken after sweeping buy side that we actually got, you know, big displacement. And then we had a pullback to this fair value gap right here, right? But once we broke through this 15 minute fair value gap, that gave us a little bit more confidence to possibly see lower. Now, if we're looking at the, this chart as well, we can see we had a 15 minute fair value gap. We have a 15 minute fair value gap here. What do I want to see if we're bearish? I don't want to see us respect this. I want to see us break through it. So notice we continue to hold this bounce up, bounce up, bounce up, and we continue to hold this here. What do I want to see if I'm bearish? I want to see a break of this, right? Notice I would not have taken a short here quite well. Actually, I would have taken a short because we have a, uh, you know, clear market structure shift, pull back to fair value gap. But if I'm bearish, I want to see these bullish fair value gaps get disrespected and then possibly look to see how they're going to react once they get touched off of, right? So let's look at some more examples here. So looking at the same chart here, right? Now, once we come down and we sweep this level here, we bounce off this one hour fair value gap. What do I now want to see? I want to see internal break of structure and I want to see, you know, or I want to see some sort of break of structure and some sort of displacement, right? So that's what we get down here. We can see we get break of structure, good displacement. We have a fair value gap, right? That could be a possible entry. Another possible entry could be right here in this fair value gap. Now, I actually wanted to take a long. I was looking to get in here, ended up not missing it. But notice the inverse fair value gap that we have on a bigger time frame, like this five minute. We have this massive fair value gap that we actually created from FOMC. What do I want to see this now? I want to see this now act as support to go to buy side. Notice I draw this in as well as looking at we have a 15 minute fair value gap as well lined. These are the areas that you will see be respected the most. This is a perfect formation of a reversal. Notice this is right here what you want to watch. Big move down. Doji candle, inversion candle, big move back up. Notice we have a fair value gap on both sides right here. We have an inverse fair value gap here, and we have a bullish fair value gap right here in the exact same area. This is going to be an area that you're going to see get respected a lot, especially because you have a bullish fair value gap and an inverse fair value gap. So these are the areas that we want to see get respected a lot. Notice similar area right here. We have that one hour or that one minute past fair value gap. We pull it over. We come back into this and you can see how much we respect this inverse fair value gap once we break above it. So what's another way that I use this? Well, the way that I like to think about inverse fair value gaps is this. Let's say on the 15 minute today, we come down and notice we actually never swept this low down here, but we swept this low and we swept this low. So I'm in the back of my head thinking, okay, you know what? Maybe we're still bearish. We possibly could go back down to sweep sell side. What's going to give me confidence that buy side is now the drawn liquidity and not sell side? Well, if we can break through this big bearish fair value gap and then end up holding the inverse fair value gap, that's going to give me confidence that the draw on liquidity is higher. So going down to the one minute, we have this big fair value gap here. Notice if I was to draw on right here, right? And I can see, okay, we have this big fair value gap, but we, sweep, we swept internal sell side, but we didn't sweep external. You know, I would want to see if I'm bearish, I want to see us hold this. But once we break above this, right? And we break above this with volume, I start to get more of a bullish bias. My, my draw on liquidity is now going to be that previous high. So I want to see us continue to respect this inverse fair value gap. And once we do continue to hold this, the draw on liquidity then becomes higher in my bias and in my opinion. And this is a great way that I use inverse fair value gaps to understand what the potential draw on liquidity is. So here's another example, right? Just looking at this chart right here, you can see how many inverse fair value gaps actually end up playing out. So we actually start bearish, right? And we have, you know, kind of a bearish fair value gap right here. Notice once we come back up to this, I would want to see this, you know, get respected back to the downside. Once I see that this actually comes back up, what would I want to see happen? When we revisit this fair value gap, I want to see this now act as support. Notice once we break through this bearish fair value gap with strong volume, we then end up retracing again, of course, back to discount, right? We go back to discount and end up respecting that past fair value gap and then end up seeing new highs back to where we were before, right? So there's a lot of times where we can use inverse fair value gaps. Here's another one right here. Once we get this initial bounce, again, if I'm bearish, I want to see this get respected, but I'm not bearish because we just ended up bouncing on this inverse fair value gap. I'm bullish. 
So if I'm bullish, I want to see all of these bearish fair value gaps get disrespected. I want to see us, I want to see them get just absolutely ran through. And then when we come back to it, I want to see them act as support. Notice we come up, break through this bearish fair value gap, and then it acts as support for now in this bullish fair value gap as well. And then we, and then we go see higher. A lot of different ways that you could use inverse fair value gaps. Notice here, we have a bearish fair value gap. When I see up, I'd want to see it get respected. Right when it doesn't get respected, look where we come back to and look where we bounce. Come to the right, go right back to this inverse fair value gap, right when we broke through it, end up supporting it. There's a lot of ways that you can use this, right? The best way I like to use it is as, as my bias. If I can't seem to understand what the draw on liquidity is, look what fair value gaps are getting respected and which ones are getting disrespected. Are bullish fair value gaps getting respected? Are bearish fair value gaps getting respected? And are inverse fair value gaps showing strength? And in what direction are they showing strength, right? Here's another example of an inverse fair value gap, right? We have clear buy side up here. Once we get this big drop to the downside, I would, I would look to see if this fair value gap is going to be respected towards the downside, right? Notice we end up coming up and we end up breaking through this. What do we now want to see this as? We want to see this now act as support to target whatever that buy side level is, right? So you can see, right when we end up disrespecting this, we break through this fair value gap. I want to now see us come back to this, show support, show respect to this level, and then go towards whatever that draw on liquidity is that we'd you know, be expecting. For this specific example, it'd be that previous high, right? So we break through this big volume, come back into this inverse fair value gap, end up getting bought back up, targeting that buy side level. Now, right when this buy side level's hit, now what am I? I'm bearish. So I want to see all these bullish fair value gaps get disrespected. Notice, same thing. I draw in bearish for value or bullish for value gap. Notice, I'm not worried about this because liquidity has been swept. Once we break through this, that gives me confirmation we probably want to go lower. Notice what happens when we come back to this level. Perfectly to the tick, to the tick, one, two, and then ends up selling right back off towards lows, right? Inverse for value gaps, such a powerful tool. Let's look at some more. Here's another example, right? So we have kind of a clear downtrend here. Again, bigger time frame. We have kind of a clear downtrend. Now we have resting buy or sell side, right? We have kind of relative equal lows here. Now, what would I look to see if I'm bearish? Well, I want to see, you know, bearish fair value gaps get respected. And I want to see bullish fair value gaps get disrespected. Well, I can see we kind of have some bearish fair value gaps up here. Notice we come up. We've been rejecting this, right? We kind of have internal break of structure. But notice we have kind of these, this big bullish fair value gap now. Well, what would I want to see happen? I don't want to see this, right? Notice we come down, continue to respect this, bounce up one more time, respect the bearish fair value gap, right? So that's kind of giving me an understanding. We're in this range, buy side up here, sell side up here. What do I think is the draw on liquidity? Notice what fair value gaps are getting respected, which ones are getting disrespected. Bearish fair value gap, getting respected many times. One, two, three, continuing to reject. Look how we come down and we stop respecting this inverse fair value gap anymore. What can I expect? I can expect for us to come back to this fair value gap, respect it, and then meet sell side. Notice, come up, we respect this bearish fair value gap. Once we break through this bullish fair value gap, we stop respecting this fair value gap. We end up bouncing right back to it, respect it, acts as resistance now, acts as resistance, and then we end up selling off, sweeping out that sell side level that we had down there. So there's a lot of ways you can use inverse fair value gaps. A lot of it just takes experience, right? The best way I like to use it, and I think what is most valuable that people don't really use them for, is recognizing strength and weakness and giving you a better sense of what the draw on liquidity is going to be. Using them in context like this is going to be super helpful, building confidence on what you think the draw is, and overall just building confidence in your trading strategy in general. So let me know if this video helped you guys in any way. Let me know if you're going to start using these in your trading strategy and be hyped for more videos to come. So. Leave a comment, make sure to subscribe, make sure you like the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.